Four lakh tech companies in the US plan to increase their remote workforce by 2024. But what's interesting is how you can crack a remote job right after college. Check out the journey of these stunning people making more than $100,000 a year or these students who cracked Google Summer of Code. Open source helps you stand out as a developer. But more than anything, remote jobs can be unlocked by making open source contributions. Going from 0 to 10 or 100 contributions can completely change your life. And right now, it's easier than ever. In this video, I'm going to reveal a 5-star strategy which can help you make high-level open source contributions. They look at the GitHub history of many of the potential candidates that they plan to hire. You're going to walk away from this video with an entirely new, improved outlook on approaching open source and ultimately cracking that remote job. Don't forget to like and subscribe and also share your thoughts in the comments below. I have observed that open source has somehow managed to eliminate the college brand gap. If someone's from a tier 1, tier 2, tier 3 college, but if they're an open source contributor, it ultimately helps them. So I want to ask you that, can open source actually help you get a job if you're passionate about it and contribute high level contributions? Absolutely, totally. And what you mentioned is exactly right because being a part of the open source community as a contributor, as a maintainer, uh, or any other way that you are giving back to the project, um, it definitely cuts across boundaries. The open source community is very, very welcoming. They, mm -hmm. they, they definitely welcome people um, who are genuinely interested in contributing and going and, uh, you know, uh, kind of walking along the journey to make things happen. I heard from one other um, CEO of a very, very well-known uh, uh, open core based uh, open source project and uh, one thing that I hear common from all of these people is that they look at the GitHub history of um, of many of the potential candidates that they plan to hire. They right. see what what is the kind of work that they have done and what is the uh, you know contributions that they have made, etc. In fact, I've heard from again one other uh, person, a technical uh, recruiter, who mentioned that the percentage of success that they have seen in hiring the right engineer that they wanted uh, was right. significantly more when uh, they were they made they made a decision based on the github profile rather than okay. on the assessments and the resume etc so it definitely helps make a big difference but it has to be genuine right so when it comes to college students who are just starting their open source journey Usually they start with non-code contributions, making documentation changes. Do you think that non-code contributions can also help you as an open source contributor? Very much, 100%. Uh, you know, in fact, that's a, that's a great way to get started. Um, because one, it can help you get familiarized with what is the right. spirit and the values of the project itself. Uh, be it documentation or even something as... Uh, you know, say like test cases or be it right. uh, design help um, or be it uh, content and tutorials. It again, you know, shows that uh, you're interested in learning and get kind of get getting started. Right. Um, and uh, there are two paths that you can have when you start with uh, a contribution that doesn't involve the core software. One, it could be a starting point for you. For example, you start um, writing some more documentation or fixing some aspects in the documentation, etc. Right. Uh, as just a starting point to understand more about the software or the app so that then you can make more contributions to it. Or you can even um, take a secondary path and then, you know, maybe even realize that you're a very good writer or you're a very good designer right. or you are a very good, uh, you know, tester who can make great uh, scenarios of uh, edge cases and things like that, right? So you can realize your own path while making some of these contributions and go down that same path and become really, really great. I've heard of many different uh, open source maintainers and also contributors who started in a similar path and, for example, realized that they're great writers. You know, they, mm, they started okay. with documentation updates and they realized they're great writers and they went on to become technical writers, uh, people contributing to uh, technical docs, tutorials. Why should someone in college be involved with open source? You should be involved in open source if you're really interested, okay? Because one of the things that I've noticed is that um, a lot of students want to get into open source and be a part of the open source ecosystem 
just because someone tells them to do so or because uh you know like they they look up to someone who is who is a part of the uh open source community and want to be like them etc contributing to open source just doesn't mean you go and do something for the sake of it what you need right. to be doing is you need to be solving a problem that exists secondly uh there is a lot of learning that happens all right because when you're working with so many different people so many different developers and even maintainers um it's inevitable that all of them are at different uh, you know stages of their career but i want to try it out i want to try open source how can i go about it as a beginner contributing to open source if you want to try out then uh, you know try out in in safe spaces for example there are a whole lot of uh, open source projects which um, which firstly helps you just get a feel for how some of the you know uh, some of the practices in open source work uh, for example just straight away starting a pr without discussing on an issue some people many many right. open source projects don't um, you know don't uh, really like that much uh similarly you know if you if you don't document enough or if you don't um, right. add in enough test cases and things like that right that's when again uh, some people might uh, you know uh, not really appreciate that so uh, what i would suggest is that first there are a lot of these safe spaces a lot of programs to just help you get started with small contributions and i would uh, suggest get right. started of course with these small contributions to just understand how the community works so before you go on to uh, make a whole lot of other contributions just understand how some of these things work and try to find where it is that your interest lies current what amount of technical knowledge is required to contribute to open source this is the language like python so if i know python can i contribute to any python project or does that depend from project to project it definitely depends uh, because see if you if you pick up one project it again you know depends on the layer of abstraction that is there all right or mm, or right. <laughs> the different layer where an open source project operates say for example you if there is an open source project which heavily depends on say um, one of the frameworks say flask or django or whatever else it is right so having a knowledge of that um of course will be useful to kind of build on top right. of that and uh, or else there could even be projects which which to say for example something more deep and technical like say um transpiling uh, various different uh, scripts from uh, you know one specific scripting slash language to another uh, language right which right. requires you uh, a lot more depth um so you know one of one of the things that someone who is um wanting to be a really good engineer a really good developer and i'm not uh, having you know mentioning this specific to uh, only open source in general if you have to be a really good engineer you have to cross the boundary of sticking to a language you can't say that i am only this language developer and that is what you know i am going to be always all right you can be i'm not saying but if you are st- sticking to one language be the goddamn best at it you know understand the depths and technicalities of the language and when i say language not the syntax just the syntax there is more to how a language operates behind the scenes say for example how it handles memory how it handles gc how it handles um, you know multi threading and processing how it handles uh, you know cpu allocation and utilization multiple aspects right so if you're sticking to one language go right. to the complete depth of it and understand it very very well if not if you want to be a little bit more broader contribute to a whole lot of other projects as well and get yourself better then cross the boundary of sticking to a specific language um and then try to start with a problem all right that's a, that's a key thing uh many of right. them you know kind of uh uh you know kind of go saying that i just want to contribute to open source all right and that's the underlying thing they don't even think about the problem like contributing to open source means uh you know you you solve a problem but when you start with the thinking that i want to contribute to open source you're starting right. with a solution and inevitably you start creating problems to fit that solution instead of the other way around so uh, if you really want to get started 
look right. around whatever you are using i'm sure you are using many packages frameworks or whatever else it is and you would have come across some or the other issue right so and you might have come across some problem that you would have faced research see what's uh, you know what is the uh, problem over there is it by design is it a bug is it a feature that's uh, you know that's important or needed should it be contributed back to the main project right. itself or as a plugin etc and work your way slowly through that uh, so so that's that's a really good way to uh, to approach uh, contributing to open source awesome awesome thank you so much karan for joining me here today and sharing your experience with my audience i loved it thanks a lot sanskar uh, for having me i hope uh, this has been this has been uh, useful uh, and folks who are tuning in you know feel free to let me know if you if you have uh, uh, any other questions that uh, or any other thoughts that you have uh, i am available on all, the, all social networks <laughs>